it, you already know what you're getting those. Um, so that becomes more efficient. Uh, but, you know, I hate to say this, uh, nowadays a traditional uh, foundation might not be as necessary as it used to be. People are getting very efficient in 3D. I know quite a few modelers who never touched clay or pan wood. Um, you know, things are things are changing quite a bit. How do you recognize a bad idea when done made, for example? How do you recognize a what? A bad idea. A bad idea. Uh, if it's not convincing, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's, it's usually as simple as that. Uh, when it comes to film, the stakes are pretty high because if they're actors on screen, you have a point of reference constantly uh, for what reality should look like. Uh, if it's not convincing next to an actor, you fail. Not necessarily in the design, sometimes in the execution. There are a lot of things that uh, make a design bad. Sad truth, I teach a lot of theory. Uh, there are things that, that define design as being good. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, essentially, that's, that's what I've, I've come to find out. Um, after working in, in the industries uh, for a while, it really only matters what the higher ups think cool is. You know, you can just do a great design, but if the guy signing the check doesn't like it, it's not going to make it on screen. So knowing your client and trying to work within his interpretation of design is your focus, is the is the goal. A lot of bad designs get through just simply because they're not popular in the boardrooms, you know, in the meetings. Can't really control that. Nowadays, I'll really just focus on doing a decent portfolio piece over anything else. Like, okay, if it makes it on screen, that's a benefit, that has a bonus, but if it looks good in my book, that's great. That tends to get me kind of through, and that's the mature way to handle uh, concept design. A lot of people take it a bit too seriously, they don't last. How do you go down to the rights of your image in terms of once you finish a project? How long before you can possibly show it? Um, well, you can actually show anything in your book. Um, as long as it's tucked under your arm, it uh, enters and leaves with you. Your biggest problem is publication. Um, and there, the, that's actually kind of great. I mean, there are things that I wouldn't show in my portfolio. Like I won't show, won't show certain projects. Like I'm a member of some Avatar, and I did some fiber wolf designs, and I didn't start to show those until they actually made it in the book. Um, it, it tends to vary. But remember that anything you show online is technically a form of publication, and uh, they'll nail you for that. It's a bit gray. But avoid showing things online until you know the movie is out. And even when the movie is out, even a couple of weeks, you design like the main villain, and then you just kind of put it out there. Um, you get in trouble. Uh, I was been on, as I mentioned, been on Green Lantern for a while, and uh, a lot of images actually leaked. Uh, I designed the Guardians for that movie, and there's even like a T-shirt out there, but I, I had them put the uh, images out, and I don't show them uh, until the film is out. Uh, there are even some designs I did as a bad guy. I designed uh, Hector Cannon to do the big head in the trailer. Still won't publish those until the movie is out. Uh, did some designs for the main, main, main villain. Um, you actually see him in the uh, in the trailer. But again, you, know, you just want to play it safe. You don't want to get a bad reputation. Here's a fun, weird alien thing. Resolving a combination of line and tone. And you want to think of your lighting. Fill, I'm sorry, key light, fill light, rim light. So I'm going to have the uh, key light here, 
still light here. Where the teacher will have to do some 
gesture studies, um, you know, long poses. The most valuable one to me, I remember a day where you weren't drawing the figure, you were just drawing cash shadows miraculously. If your uh, distances are appropriate, the cash shadows are accurate, the figure just shows up. Sometimes what throws students is taking on an assignment like the feature design and getting overwhelmed with the complexity of the anatomy. If you turn it into a study in light, if you think of it in terms of a landscaping of light passing over a mountainous terrain, then it becomes, uh, I guess, obtainable or easier to comprehend, break it down, simplify. Uh, the greatest concept artists are the greatest simplifiers. And I'm focusing on a bit of a rim line here. How am I doing the time? Okay. Commit. 
only recently that I've been starting my images entirely in Photoshop. Working with a tablet uh, takes a while to, I think, get used to it now. I, I feel a little uncomfortable on paper, which is a little sad, but essentially a problem. There's layers, there's layers, there's details. Yeah, it's just okay, it's commitment stuff. And I'm still going to save my real details for the photos.
Okay, so Um, lower the opacity. 
just enough color. Okay, so I can fill this back up. Uh, let's see what we have. So now it comes the fun part. Now, if this is a video game gig, I don't have to take this thing that far. I can sharpen this, send it out, rough sketch, done. Film uh, uh, has to be, uh, gotta be tighter. Oh, I like. Grandma's chin. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the grandma's chin. Hey, yeah, do it. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm going to select. Uh, you can put a little feather on um, your selection. That way, you don't really come across too many uh, sharp edges. <coughs> you zoom in on some concept art and see all of these conflicting edges. It's hilarious. Sometimes you'll even see watermarks. So, you have to really know your anatomy because you have to be able <laughs> to place these photos. Now, when I'm incorporating photos, I'll do one of three things. I'll either lower the opacity, turn it into a soft light layer, or overlay it. Sometimes, I'll turn it into a whole white layer. As you lower the opacity, notice how the skin just wraps around the forms. That's why your drawing better be good, otherwise you're just going to be get wrapped in an amorphous blob. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what it ends up feeling like. So, all right, so if you lose, you need a soft eraser too. Controls here a little high. Let's go to my history. E, very soft. As we go in here, Make sure your landmarks line up. The creature has fleshy, baggy eyes and the nasal labial fold. Move this out a little bit. Select. Nasal labial. So you can see, not only am I selecting similar images, but I'm also uh, selecting photos with a similar palette. Eventually you start to do that. So things think of map painters will actually have folders, folders of reference that will uh, there we go. Oh mountains and scenes at different times of day so that they can uh, slap photos together and sync shadows. No exception. So now we're just wrapping this guy. Take a little bit of gold. Guys, don't always do it. But you get all 
lot from it. Now, as when I'm actually teaching the class, uh, the first assignment, there is no photos whatsoever. Then we slowly start to integrate it. Um, this is my opinion, I think it would be irresponsible to not tell students what's actually being utilized out there. What about the truth is, the truth of the matter has always been if you can't do it without the photos, you're not going to do it very well with them. There it is. Okay. So you can see I can get a lot of textures this way. <coughs> Thank you. 